When I left, I told this police officer everything. And she said, because this happened in another country, all we can do is take your story, give it to Interpol. But um, I never heard anything. I watched that place like a hawk. All those brothers and sisters that I'd made, I knew they were trapped there. TB Joshua was a big name. He had influences on presidents. I mean, when the building collapsed, he had a state visit from the then president, Good luck, Jonathan Ebele. So it is only natural that such people could commit a crime. Even when the evidences are out, they will end up going scot free. Give him Prophet TB Joshua. My personal condolences and that of the federal government to the church. But primarily, my coming here is to express our condolences to Prophet Joshua. As a documentary airs on BBC Channel, there are a lot of talk points that can be garnered from the interviews. Initially, it was Bisola and Prophet Agamor that has been going about for ages, making the sounds, speaking up about the speaking about the atrocity that we are committed in a synagogue of all nations. If people leave, they will die. All right, before I die, let me tell the whole world. We teamed up and did that video. I wanted people to know the truth. At the time when Bisola and Prophet Agamor came up, the same synagogue of Onisha came out and did a documentary in order to tarnish their image and discredit their confession. Interestingly, the woman that did the voiceover happens to be part of the victims that came out to speak up. I was called to go and run a voiceover. I was given a script to read targeting Bissola Johnson. She was a lawyer. We have to make her look like a complete nutcase. We have to discredit her. He'd clearly taken footage of times she had been forced to confess things. What is the problem you have with your brain? I always have a terrible headache. And any time it happens, I always misbehave. I always behave irrationally. Is this the behavior of somebody in their right mind? Is this the kind of person who we should believe? Bissola was disgraced and humiliated. Paula Gomor, yeah, he did the same thing. Would you put your trust in a man like this? This thing went all over YouTube. It's still there today. It was sent all around the world. That was a warning to everybody. If you leave, if you speak about the things you've seen and heard, and we all held secrets individually, that this could be you. But I'm good, please. <laughs> It was all about silencing opposition. So this is more like hearing from the horse's mouth. This was the same woman that was responsible for the voiceover that discredited Bisola and Prophet Agomor's testimony back then that was airing everywhere on YouTube. And here she's coming back to say they were the architects that discredit those testimonies. So what does this tell you? All this cover-up has been going on. And as you can tell, these cover-ups were not done by him alone. So it's only natural when we get to see victims coming out to lay out their confession, to tell what they knew. The best we can do is to pay attention and listen and compare. Don't be quick to draw conclusions or be sentimental. Let me start from Friday morning. I received a phone call that there was a jet here at the church. Hovering around the building, passing over the building four times at a very low rate before the building collapsed. So we are going to show you the video. Take note of the upper left-hand corner of the screen. A strange aircraft flies over the building at the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Nine minutes later, the strange aircraft returns. This is the moment of the incident. The aeroplane story is just pure lie. I can tell you the honest truth. On the 12th of September, somebody walking in the maintenance department went to that guest house. As he was there, he realized that that building was unstable. It was shaky. By 12.01, the building collapsed. They told us then that don't say what you know. More so, there is also these guys that we are called the five-story disciples. These were the boys that served him closely. 
that we are in his closet. These were the boys that saw his nakedness. We were called Five Story Brothers, that is young guys like me, that asked the opportunity to serve the prophet, just literally serve him just the way the maid serves kings. People compare his Five Story Brothers to be his personal slave because everything he needs, you must be there. All is in my mind is, where is he now? Has he eaten? Has he taken his bath? Is the shower ready? You have to be there in his privacy. If I can use the word even to the nudity, you see everything. When Tim Yoshan needs to go to the toilet, two of us has to be there in the toilet. He would remove his underwear to his knee level. Then we bring it down. We don't allow him to bend down. There was a lot of strange things behind closed doors. His underwears, his underwears. You know he wears white. Most times he 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 pours this honey. I will pour it inside his, his pants. Inside his underwear, he will pour it there. When he pours those honey there, he wears the underwear. And I was like, what's, what, what, what's the significance of this? Why is he doing this? There were also testimonies of sacrifices that was done by the person of T.B. Joshua, where he repeatedly comes to cut off his pubic hair and feed them to a fish that eventually multiplies. The 16 years I spent there, we are the prayer warrior, which is the powerhouse of the ministry. I happen to be the leader. He will give you different assignments. There was one day, TV Joshua came to the mountain. They caught one fish alive, very big. So in my present, TV Joshua caught his beard, caught part of the hair, his private part. He put those things in the mouth of that fish. So we should take it back to the river and drop it. That was how they started multiplying. When they lay egg, they lay thousands of eggs. It's secretive. If we are talking about spiritual power, either it's Satan or it's God. One thing you would have noticed that is common among these so-called occultic prophets that have diabolic manifestations that they call miracle always have one thing or the other to do close to the river. It's either they hold prayer mountains by the river or they hold programs by the river. And now I'm specifically talking about those prophets that have diabolic practices not the fake prophet that's of course fake miracles but for those ones that have manifestations of somewhat diabolic practices check them properly within nigeria within africa why is it so have you ever asked yourself this question why do they always have something to do close to the river more so ricky the youtuber happens to have one of the victims on a live interview which is currently airing you can check that out on his channel and you will see how this victim that happens to have lived together with most of these victims coming out to speak up. They knew themselves. You will see how she was giving her testimony. And I want you to judge from her testimony. Does this look like someone that is faking a story? Or does it rather look like someone telling out her own life experiences these are the many dark secrets that has been covered and you might ask the question why are they coming out now some of them came out but nobody listened to them because obviously prophet tb joshua has garnered a lot of influence he has garnered a lot of influence there are news that some of the governors and presidents we are consulting this man so he had most of them as his friends so who's going to so who's going to persecute them is it the same states that have been in league with this prophet? My intention for this video is to see that as many that cares to listen will begin to think and seek God and of course be liberated. There have been a lot of prophets that have been speaking against this prophet. Don't you think this might be a time for you to truly sit down and re-evaluate what is being churned out by this ministry. Yes, he's dead, but a lot might still be under his influence. And what you need is not to come on my comment section 
and attack me. But what you need is to be liberated from whatsoever that is not of God, that has come as an influence from these prophets. A word is enough for the wise.